Okay folks, welcome to lecture 18. And in this lecture we're going to take a look at a particular algebraic skill, factoring or factorization as it's often called. But first of all, we just take a look when sums go bad. Back in 1999, uh, the Mars Climate Orbiter was a joint project between Lockheed Martin and NASA and unfortunately had a very embarrassing end when the orbiter crashed into Mars. So due to conversion, unit conversions, well unfortunately this was the lack of unit conversions was the problem. Lockheed Martin were using the Imperial, the English system of measurement when programming the software. NASA used the metric system. So the orbiter was launched and it was flying for kind of eight months or nine months bef towards Mars before it simply disappeared off the radar or disappeared, they lost contact with it. So essentially this error in conversion led it what they suspect to follow this lower trajectory rather than the upper trajectory. So the upper trajectory would have brought the climate into an orbiter around Mars whereas the lower trajectory, the force of gravity, simply pulled the orbiter in and it would have crashed. There's no landing gear, so it never survived. So, obviously, people had inquiries and stuff, and ultimately, they were saying, like, it's embarrassing to lose a, sa a spacecraft, especially a $125 million spacecraft with millions of hours of work gone into its uh, construction and development. So the main lesson again guys is just simple errors can have catastrophic consequences. So that's really the underlying kind of um, aim of this module is to try and lay down good foundations. So now we'll take a look at factorization in general. Just guys in general factorization is really last week or in the last lecture, we took a look at multiplying out brackets. So if we multiply 2x by x minus 1, we'd end up with 2x squared minus 2x. Factorization simply brings us from the product stage. So this was what we did last week. Factorization is simply reversing that process. So that's all. This is called expand. Expand the brackets. And this is really factor the product. But we'll just start with some kind of some more familiar ground. So factors are the elements which are multiplied together to get us a product, to get a product. So we usually start with a product and we work back to, well, what was multiplied together to give me this product? That's what we're looking for. So if we look at 12 as the product, we could have the factors of 1 and 12, or 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 are all factors of 12. Similarly, 2x squared minus 2x can be broken into its original fraction, its original factors, sorry. So we're just going to start by simplifying expressions first. We'll come on to this in a little bit, how we do this, but we're just going to start with something a little bit simpler. And I'll just start with something with just numbers, no variables. So say you were asked to simplify the following expression. Well, first of all, without doing any simplification, we're just going to work things out. So on the top, we'll have 12. On the bottom, we'll have 8. So this value, this rational term, is actually worth two, 3 over 2. Now, a big problem we see kind of in college, and it's something we're trying to get students to avoid, is people can tend to cancel at will. And there's this thing we'd often see, 8, we'll cancel in 8 here, and 8 will go into 16 twice, and off we go. Now, if we work this out in its new form, it's 2 minus 4 over 1. That's minus 2 on top over 1, which is minus 2. Now, I think you'll agree that that's certainly not equal to the true value. So that would suggest that's an incorrect method, and it is. 
the main problem here guys is, is there's three terms in our expression you can't just pick two of them and do something to them and leave the third one out so the four didn't have anything done to it so if we're going to do something to an expression especially in a rational expression a fraction looking one like this you must do it to every term so now if we approach the problem differently and we say right well what's common what's a what's the common factor to each term well we can see two will go into all three numbers but four will also go in so four is much more desirable we always look for the highest common factor the hcf so now guys what happens is we simply divide each term 16 divided by 4 gives us 4 minus 4 divided by 4 gives us minus 1 8 divided by 4 gives us 2 and now so we've simplified the expression and now when we calculate on the top we'll get 3 over 2 and we can see that that is still equal to the original value so it's a valid technique so that's the main thing we're looking at with simplifying expressions if you're going to cancel every term above and below the line must have the same thing done to it so here now we have this expression what we're looking for well four looks like a factor two but what you simply do is you kind of take a look and you say well oops sorry what's the highest common factor of each term well we just start looking at the numbers first well what's the highest common factor amongst the numbers eight four and two we can see well that's two then if we look at the x's we've got x squared on the top x to the power of one x to the power of two on the bottom well what power of x will divide into them all we can see well that's x so we do the numbers first and then we do the powers or the variables so we can see that x to the power of one is the highest x value that will divide into everything so now guys the highest common factor of each of the three terms is 2x and what simply happens now is we're simply going to divide each term by 2x now that should be 8x squared and yeah. so we go in and we now you don't need to write this step guys I'm really just writing this to try and show you what's going on and now we start to work on the top left term numbers do what numbers do 8 divided by 2 will give us 4 and then x squared divided by x to the power of 1 that gives us x now looking at the next term on the top line 4 divided by 2 gives me 2 keep my sign x divided by x just cancels each other out and finally then guys on the bottom the twos will cancel out and one of the x's will cancel sorry I should have cancelled the squared not the not the x so on the bottom guys then we'll just end up with x and this now is our new simplified expression it's very important guys to realize just like in our fractions what I mean is that a half so let's say 100 over 200 is the same as a half these fractions are equivalent in the same way guys these algebraic expressions are equivalent so if you stick any value of x in you're going to get the same value out of both expressions so this leads on to the first question where I just ask you guys to kind of simplify a few expressions now this is actually from the last lecture where you were evaluating 
So you could have simplified first that would have made your life a bit easier. I didn't bring it in back then, but you know now. Here's another one, part B. And then we have part C. So you're really looking for what's the highest common factor of each term and then divide each term by that highest common factor. So we'll move on. Now we're going to take a look at actually the nuts and bolts of the lecture, factorizing expressions. So when factorizing, try and find the HCF between the terms, the highest common factor. So here now we have two terms, 6AB minus 12A squared. So like I was saying in the previous example is always look at the numbers first. What's the highest common factor amongst our numbers? Well, that's 6. 6 will divide into 6 and 12. Then looking at the variables, well, what will divide into AB and also A squared? The only thing that's common to both is A. So 6A is our highest common factor. Now we simply factorize each term separately. So we kind of pull this apart. 6a, b, sorry, is really 6a by b. Then 12a squared is really 6a. Well, we need to get 12, so we have to multiply it by 2, and we need to get a. So we kind of factorize each term, split each term into the factors, and then, guys, we see, well, 6a is common to both of these terms. These are still two terms. They're just factorized. It's still one term. So we say, well, what's common to both terms? Well, 6a is. So then on the left, we have 6a multiplied by b. And on the right-hand side, we've got 6a multiplied by minus 2a. So this minus guy is still sitting and he's going to come in and sit beside him. So now we've factorized our expression. And from lecture 17, guys, it doesn't matter which way we write things. So we could easily write our, fractions, our factors this way with the 6a as the second factor. And that's still perfectly correct because the... Arabic scholars were telling us, well, AB is the same as BA. So with multiplication of terms, we can move them around to suit ourselves. So this is just writing what I said a little bit more neatly, though. And there's our common factor coming true. And then there's the bracket containing the other two terms. So now using the same idea, you guys have a go at factorizing these expressions. Ask yourself, what's the highest common factor as a number? And then what's the highest common factor as a variable? Always try and pull out the highest common factor, guys. So just be careful. These ones are fairly straightforward. You won't, you won't make a mistake. So now we just take a look at factorizing more complex expressions. There's now four terms involved. And what's difficult here, guys, is we can see that there's no common factor to each term. So there's, this is an expression, and there's four terms in it just to kind of emphasize the language of maths. But no kind of element is common to all four terms. So in that case, guys, what we can do is just pair things off. So I'm going to pair the first two simply because they've both got A. So I know they've got at least one common factor. And if I kind of pull A out, guys, I'm going to have A multiplied by C on this side. And then here, guys, we have A multiplied by minus D. Then we take a look at the other two. 
as a pair and we're going to try and kind of change them well what's common to both the terms in the second brackets we can see well b is common to both terms and then here we have b by minus c on the left and here we have plus b by d and that will get us there. So now we kind of take a look and we go, okay, well, I'm looking for a common factor amongst both of these. That should be a plus B there at the moment. That's what I've taken out. And we can kind of see, well, here's C and D and here's C and D, but the signs are wrong. So how I get around that, guys, it's quite a simple little trick is I just change this sign. So if I take out minus B, rather than b so now i've got minus b multiplied by c on the left and then i have a plus so i have a minus already so i must multiply it by another minus to get a plus b by d and with that little kind of sleight of hand i've now established a common factor. So now I've got C, I'll just get rid of these brackets actually because they're not very helpful, those brackets. So now I've got C minus D. On the left, it's multiplied by plus A. And on the right, C minus D is multiplied by minus B. And now I've established my factors. If I multiply these out again using FOIL, guys, from lecture 17, I will end back up with the expression above. And again, the order in which you write your factors, now don't change the signs. So this, guys, I'm sorry, I've just negated that line above in case people are confused. So this could be written either way like that and just double checking that everything is okay it looks okay so that guys is the technique there and again it's um it's tricky don't worry about it too much this is pretty much the only place on this module where you're going to encounter these type of factorization problems i just kind of i feel factorization is a very important skill so that's why i kind of push it a little bit further we take a look at another example, guys, and then I let you guys have a go at one. So here we have, again, there's no factor common to all four terms. There's no element common to all four terms. So I'm going to take them in pairs, guys. And this, just to do it differently, I could take 3a squared. I could take these two as a pair because they've obviously got a as a factor. But I'm kind of looking at the first term and the third term, because I can see there's 3a common. So I'm going to go for these two first. So I'll do these two actually in, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep the colors because it'll just get messy. So here, guys, I have 3a multiplied by a. In this term here, I have 3a multiplied by 3c. So now with these two, I've got 3a multiplied by a plus 3c. So that's grouping those two terms together. Now I'll do the other two in red just to make sure um, there's a distinction. So now I look at these two terms. And I say, well, what's common to both terms? And again, I'm kind of looking at it and going, well, b is common but also the minus sign, guys. So here, I'll just bring this over here. I've got minus A, what's common B? So I'll take that out. So I've got minus B multiplied by A. And then here, guys, I've got minus B multiplied by 3C. So minus b is common to both of these terms. And on the left, 
it's multiplied by a and on the right minus b is multiplied by plus 3c and now I can see I've got a common factor I've still got two terms here guys I've split my four terms into two terms using factorization and now I can see I've got a common factor a plus 3c is common to both terms so a plus 3c on the left here it's multiplied by 3a and on the right it's multiplied by minus b and now I've factorized my expression so your key guys is when you're factorizing by pairs once you've got both pairs factorized you'd need to try and kind you need to find a common factor and they'll usually kind of pop out fairly quickly because it's just the nature of these kind of things that it, it has to happen and again guys the order in which you write those brackets is irrelevant so that's equally 3a minus b by a plus 3c that's also correct just clear this so watch out for that folks now password just in case here I'll push on so here's one for you guys to give a go and I'd even just giving you a head start looking at the first two terms guys we've got 3p is common to both terms see where you go from there maybe or else you could go for 4r between these two so just choose a pair that have got some common factor and see how far you can push it along like i said guys don't worry about it too much if you don't these don't sit well with you you won't be meeting them again you know they're not uh, they're not crucial to the module but it's just important to have that like if you can do these problems then you're going to have no problem with any of the factorization we'll meet later on in the module so now we we'll take a look at factorizing specific expressions quadratics quadratic is a very specific expression it's usually only got one variable in it so it would usually be written x squared plus 3x plus 2 or something like that or a squared plus 2a minus 6 so the main thing guys is there's only one variable in a quadratic and the highest power is a squared so just that's how you recognize a quadratic so essentially there's three different types and there's a different method for each type of quadratic so in the first type of quadratic guys we've simply got two x terms so these are actually the easiest these are what we've been doing just using common factors exactly like we saw so we will do each of these in turn but i'm just laying out a general plan the next one then guys these are kind of the trickiest and also the rarest and if we take a look first of all there's nothing common there's no common factors so that'll tell you straight away you're kind of in an unusual type the other way thing then is that both of these is this is actually something squared this is 2x to be squared and 9 is actually also something to be squared and they've been subtracted so if you can see that that both terms are something squared and they're been subtracted then you're into a very specific technique it's called the difference of two squares you might remember that from the leave insert and then this is kind of the most common uh, quadratic the trinomial simply trinomial means the three numbers it's got three terms so we look at each one in turn first one guys like we said just find the common factors 3x is common so on the left we have 3x by x in the right hand term we have 3x multiplied by minus 2 so you can usually just do these in one step you don't have to break it down too much and these are our factors 
You could also have x guys. Sometimes people kind of argue that x by 3x minus 6. Now that they are factors, but you always try and take out the highest common factor. And Moodle will look for this guys. Moodle will not give that as correct. So you're always expected when it says simplify or when you're factorizing, you always try and take out the highest common factor because you can see in here, three is still a factor to these. So just watch for that. So like I said, guys, those are the most simple. They're the ones we've been kind of working on for the last 25 minutes. Next one, difference of two squares. First, if you notice, there's nothing common. There is no common factors between your terms. That's your first alarm bell. Secondly, then, is if you can notice that it is something squared. On the left is that's something squared. And on the right, that's also something squared. If you notice that, guys, you've pretty much solved the problem. Because the difference, the factors here are simply the, these two with a plus sign between them and then these two factors with a minus sign between them. And if you multiply this out, guys, using FOIL, you will end up back with 4x squared minus 9 because the inner bits, 6x, and the outer bits, minus 6x, will cancel each other out. So that, guys, is the difference of two squares. So there's videos on Moodle, guys, going over these as well with a few more examples. I'm really just kind of laying out the basic types at the moment. So if you want a bit more detail, you can go to the videos on Moodle and you'll see different examples being worked out. This one is the rarest, guys, so you won't see it too much. How you'll know you've come across it, like I said, if there's no common factors. In the previous example, it was very obvious that 3x was common to both terms. Here, there's nothing common to both terms. So that's your clue that you might be dealing with difference of two squares. Sometimes as well, guys, there's just terms that can't be factorized. So you might have come across one of those as well. So now, guys, we'll take a look at factorizing the trinomial. So that's the one with three numbers. Now, there's a lot of different ways of solving these out. And the way I use, guys, I particularly like it, is I call it just the big X method. And we're essentially going to put in four little dots here. I'll just lay it out first. And when I get my answer, guys, those four dots would form the elements of my factors. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to break the problem down into essentially four corners. Then we have to figure out the signs. Is there pluses or minuses between these? And that comes later on. But we'll start off just with figuring our way through what we have. So now... We've laid out the problem. I get rid of these dots. These are going to be filled with variables and numbers. I'll just make that a little bit neater. And now, how I get this x squared, guys, is, well, it's these two terms multiplied. So on the left-hand side, this is multiplied by the top one to give me x squared. The only values that will give me x squared are x and x and now i'm saying well on the right hand side i have two elements and when these two are multiplied they must give me 12 so i'm kind of asking well what are the factors of 12 and we've already seen these guys well at the start of the lecture i said well you could have one by 12 you could have two by six or you could have three by four so which pair is the best to use? And this, guys, is the one of the most kind of important parts. So this is choosing which pair of factors to go for. Now, how you do it, guys, is we're going to change this multiplied sign into either a plus or minus. So essentially, using 1 and 12, there's only two numbers I can arrive at. I can add them to get 13, or I can subtract them, and I get 11. 
Again, plus or minus. I could put two minuses, etc. With two and six, guys, the only numbers I can arrive at are I can add them, eight, or I can subtract them, which is going to give me four. And again, plus, minus, plus, minus on either of those values. With three and four, guys, the only numbers I can get, well, I could add them, seven, or I can subtract them, one. So why did I do that? Well, the reason is, guys, is because the pair I want to pick is governed by here. What number sits in front of x? It's the number 1. So that tells me that 3 by 4 is the right pair of factors to use. So now, it doesn't matter which I put where. At the moment, it doesn't because of the x's are both got a 1 in front of them. So I'm just going to put 3 on the top and 4 on the bottom. And I just do a quick check. Everything is OK so far. x by x is x squared. 3 by 4 is 12. All is good so far. Now, guys, I need to develop this value here. And in doing so, this takes care of all the signs. So now, how I get this value x is I multiply these two values here. 4 by x, or x by 4, we get 4x. Similarly then, guys, I multiply the other diagonal. 3 by x. So that gives me 3x. And now I'm going to have to add them in some way. But this is the crucial step now, guys, is I actually write this value. So what's here, guys, goes as my answer. I want to get plus x. That's the answer I want. So I have to make the signs work. So I have to adjust the signs. So the only way I can get plus x is to put plus 4 on the top and minus on the 3x. So plus 4... Sorry, plus goes with the 4x, the minus goes with the 3x. When I add those, I'm going to get plus x. So I go back to my diagonals. So the 4x diagonals, guys, needs to be plus this diagonal. So I can just write in a plus sign in front of the 4. Similarly, guys, the other diagonal, 3x diagonal, that must be minus. Now I could stick the minus in here, but I don't need to at the moment, you know, but that is an alternative if you're really stuck. So now guys, I've kind of got my four elements on each corner and I've also got the signs. I just have to check everything works out. So X by X gives me X squared. That's okay. Minus three by plus four that gives me minus 12. So that term is good. Now, the main diagonal, x by plus 4, gives me 4x. x by minus 3 gives me minus 3x. When I add those together, I do end up with plus x. So everything is working out, guys. All is good. And now, guys, the problem is solved. I can get rid of the big x. The top row is one factor and the bottom row is our other factor. Now again guys the order doesn't matter but make sure you don't get to change the signs but you can write the factor on the left on the right and vice versa. So both of those are absolutely correct. And like I said, guys, there's a plethora of ways of doing that, just loads of different ways of doing them. I don't mind which way you choose, but just make sure you're arriving at the right answer. Take another look at another one, just real quick. I'll speed through this a bit quicker. Whoops. So draw my big X. Uh, factors of 6, 1 by 6, 3 by 2. I'll just try 3X by 2X. Factors of 1 are easy. There's only, it can only be 1 by 1. I'm leaving a bit of space for my signs. Now I need minus 5X. So I multiply this diagonal. 
3x by 1 gives me 3x. On the other diagonal, 2x by 1 gives me 2x. I must have 5x as my answer, minus 5x. The only way I can achieve that, guys, is if both of those terms are negative. So that means I need to stick a minus in here to make my 2x leg negative. And also down here, so 3x by minus 1 gives me minus 3x. And now we'll just check whether that works. 2x by 3x gives me 6x squared. Minus 1 by minus 1 gives me plus 1. I have on the main diagonal, top left to bottom right, 3x by minus 1 is minus 3x. 2x by minus 1, minus 2x, they add to minus 5x, so everything works out. Top row is one factor, and the bottom row is our other factor. And like I said, guys, lots of different ways to get there. Be very careful, guys. This is as far as you go. So you stop here. Don't try and solve these to get the roots. We can't do that, guys, because we can only do that if we have an equal to zero. We don't have that. So this is as far as you can go. If you try and get the roots and end up saying something like, oh, x is equal to one third, that's incorrect. We have no information to arrive at that conclusion. So we're only looking at factorizing in this lecture. So stop there. Don't do any more. So now, guys, last set of problems. You guys pause the video and have a wee go at these. Whichever method works for you, guys, I'm not trying to force my method upon you. If you have a method that works for you, that's absolutely fine. So just have a go at these four problems here. So I'll let you take them down, and we'll finish up there. So thanks very much, guys, for your patience. Um, we'll chat again for lecture 19.